Islam. So we're going to go over the aspect of Article 4, Section 1 of the Constitution, dealing with public acts of a state. Um, we all should know by now um, case law, you know, judicial acts, resolutions, proclamations, etc. public law of a state is a uh, full faith and credit and, it, and it's binding. All right. Um, so here, for example, we already know House Resolution 1203 dealing with Georgia, right? We know it's a proclamation in LA. We know it's one in Texas and we know it's one in um, Illinois stating that our people were Aboriginal and indigenous you know, Moorish Americans to North, Central and South America. So we already know that. So here's another another aspect. Uh, oh, before I get into that, we know the Sundry Free Moors Act. We know that is uh, South Carolina is a public act of a state of Georgia said presidents, you know, land foundation of our status. So this is Illinois. And the reason I'm reading this is because um, Noble Jew Ali did a filing in Chicago and he utilized a law in there that was favorable for the political movement. Um, and that, that will be apparent as we, as we move forward. So I'm gonna read Illinois General Assembly. And as I'm reading this, just keep in mind, of organizational and why Noble Jew Ali chose to use Illinois to file the body politic called Holy, the Moorish Holy Temple of Science and do, doing business as Moorish Science Temple of America. You're gonna see why he chose Illinois. So Illinois General Assembly. Let me let the brothers in, a couple more brothers in. Dealing with trusts and fiduciaries. Uniform Prudent Management Institutional Funds Act, 760, section one, short title. This act may be cited as the Uniform Prudent Management of Institutional Funds Act. Section two, definitions in this act. Charitable purpose, charitable purposes. Charitable purpose, charitable purposes means the relief of poverty, the advancement of education or religion, the promotion of health, the promotion of governmental purpose. So let's rewind here. Charitable purpose in Illinois. Charitable purpose means the relief of poverty, the advancement of education or religion the promotion of health, the promotion of governmental purposes, governmental purposes, or any other purpose, the achievement of which is beneficial to the community, the community, right? The people part of the body politic. Two, endowment fund means an institutional fund or part thereof that under the terms of a gift instrument is not wholly expendable by the institution on a current basis. The term does not include assets that an institution designates as an endowment fund for its own use. Three, gift instrument means a record or records, including an institutional uh, solicitation under which property is granted to, transferred to, or held by an institution as an institutional fund. Four, an institution means A, a person other than an individual, organized and operated exclusively for charitable purposes. B, a government or governmental subdivision agency or instrumentality to the extent that it holds funds exclusively for charitable purposes or a trust that have both charitable and non-charitable interests after all non-charitable interests had terminated. Five, institutional funds means a fund held by an institution exclusively for charitable purposes. 
This term does not include A, program related assets, B, a fund held for an institution by a trustee that is not an institution, or C, a fund in which a beneficiary that is not an institution has an interest, other than an interest that could arise upon violation or failure of the purposes of the fund. So you're pretty much violating the bylaws and the structure. Person means an individual, corporation, business, trust, estate, trust, partnership, limited liability company, association, joint venture, public corporation, government or governmental subdivision agency or instrumentality or any other legal or commercial entity. Seven, program related asset. Program related asset means an asset held by an institution primarily to accomplish a charitable purpose of the institution and not primarily for investment. Eight, record. Record means that information that is inscribed on a tangible medium or that is stored in an electronic or other medium and is retrievable in perceivable form. So it's bookkeeping or record keeping. Section three, standard of conduct in managing and investing institutional fund. A, subject to the intent of a donor expressed in a gift, in a gift instrument, an institution in managing and investing an institutional fund shall consider the charitable purposes of the institution and the purposes of the institutional fund. In addition, or B, in addition to complying with the duties of loyalty, loyalty imposed by law other than this act, each person responsible for managing and investing in an institutional fund shall manage and invest the fund in good faith and with the care of ordinarily prudent person in the like position would exercise under similar circumstances. So his organization going on, his, his loyalty going on. These are elements that need to show up in the organization. And we already covered what, what uh, institutional fund and charitable purposes mean pushing our political agenda is a charitable, um, that's an act right there. That was, that was a definition for, for under charitable purposes. If y'all was paying attention earlier, you know, the, the pushing of your political agenda, the advancement of health, you know, setting up businesses, the, the welfare of the community. That was the language that we read for, for the definition of charitable purposes. So one, in managing and investing an institutional fund, the following factors, if relevant, must be considered. A, general economic conditions. B, the possible effect of inflation or deflation. C, the expected tax consequences, if any, of investment decision or strategies. The role that each investment or course of action plays within the overall investment portfolio of the fund. The expected total return from income and appreciation of investments. Other resources of the institution, F, G, the needs of the institution and the funds to make distributions and to preserve capital. H, an asset special relationship, special value, if any, to the charitable purposes of the institution. Two, management and investment decisions about an individual asset must be made not in isolation but rather in the context of the institutional funds portfolio of investments as a whole and as a part of an um, overall investment strategy so i just wanted to read enough of that so you can see that it needs to be organization it needs to be election going on it needs to be some internal affairs going on Right. And Noble Joe Ali, as you will see as, as we move forward here, chose to organize the body under, as we call them, sheiks. But as you as you know, secretaries, etc., whatever we call them, but you're gonna see how. as we keep reading the parallels. So as you look, can everybody see the screen still? 
Okay. Yes. So, so before I read, this is still in Illinois. And this is another reason why Noble Jawali chose this to file is 805 ILCS 110 is a religious corporation act. This is a religious corporation act under business organizations, a religious corporation act under business organizations. So highlighted when we read further, things going to be highlighted as we read the red just replace whatever they're talking about as Moorish Holy Temple of Science. If you see green, replace it. You just know it was sheiks. Uh, yellow Moorish Science Temple of America, if it was blue, it's a presiding officer and affirmation for a body, you know, like, you know what I'm saying? We got treasury, we got secretaries, et cetera. All right. So business organizations, Religious Corporation Act. Short title. This act may be cited as the Religious Corporation Act. So section 35 of the act from uh, chapter 32 page or paragraph 164, section 35, and it states any church, congregation or society, right? Society, back up here, Moore's Holy Temple of Science or anybody politic of, of you know what I mean? of Moors or society formed for the purposes of religious worship may become incorporated in the manner following by electing or appointing according to its usage or customs. So what are, you know, Moorish uses and customs at any meeting held for that purpose, two or more of his members as trustees, remember, now just the highlighted part, just the highlighted part, so separate the, when I, when I say trustees, you, you just think chic. When I say warden, just think chic. When I say other officers, think, think secretary, treasurer. That's where your mind, that's where it's, you know what I'm saying? Noble Jew Ali was a genius. Trustees, wardens, and vestrymen, or such other officers whose power and duties are similar to those of trustees, right? Assistant sheiks. As, sh as shall be agreeable to the usage and customs, right? Bylaws, rules or regulations of such congregation, church or society. Bylaws, don't we got bylaws? Don't we got organization? That needs to be in place. And may adopt a corporate name. So that's what Noble Jew Ali did. The, the civic organization, Moorish Holy Temple of Science adopted a corporate name. Moorish Science Temple of America, that's the DBA, but it's still a civic organization. That's just the DBA to do business. But only a corporation can deal with corporations. We should know that by now. And upon the filing of the affidavit, so that's the affidavit that he filed in Chicago, that famous affidavit, that's on the back of the 101s. Stating that Amelia will be the successor. Upon filing the affidavit, as here and after provided, it shall be and remain the body politic and so is the civic organization is still the body politic and corporate by the name so adopted. Simple. Section 36. The chairman, cheek, or secretary of such meeting shall as soon as be after such meeting make the file in the office of the recorder in the county in which such congregation church or society is organized which shall be recorded by such recorder and affidavit affidavit substantially in the following form in the state of Illinois and it shall have a uh i boom 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 solemnly swear or firm as the case may be that at a meeting of the members, and then you insert the name of the members. That's what Noble Jawali did. He, had, he had inserted the sheet, he inserted the secretary, he inserted the right for the society as known before in the incorporation or the organization bylaws paperwork held at, insert the place of the meeting, 
where the organization took uh, place. Um, County of, uh, insert the date for that purpose, what the purpose was for. The following persons were elected, right? So in Noba Juwali case, in um, our authority, he elected once again, Amelia Hill and uh, two other uh, Moors for uh, positions, right? So the trustees would be the, right, the sheiks or wardens, vestrymen, whatever in their language, choose to adopt with powers and duties similar to trustee, right? According to the rules and usages of such, what? Society. So you notice how they keep saying the rules of the society? That's the law. That's a, that's a jurisdiction right there, especially if it's, it has a national character, if it's a national society, and it's not like a black, Negro, colored, Hispanic, Latino, Puerto Rican club, or just a, a bike a bike crew. We just ride, <laughs> we ride motorcycles and all that, whatever. No, it's a national, religious, civic society that's attached to a nation of people. Those bylaws are the law. That's why when Amelia L took Kirkman Beta um, to court to sue after the transition of Noble Joe Ali, he lost because the bylaws is already state. It's already stated what's going to happen on which. You know, what I mean, that's in house, right? So if our everybody knew, knew jurisdiction and law, they can't pierce our national veil, so to say. All right. And the society adopted as its corporate name here, insert the name, right? More Science Temple of America. And at the meeting, this F, the Safian acted as chairman or secretary, as the case may be. Name the affiant, such congregation, church, or society, and it may change its name or make amendments to the original affidavit of incorporation by passing the resolution of such amendment in accordance with the rules and usages of who? The society in our case. You notice how it keeps going back to the rules and usages of the society? That's the law. And filing an affidavit to the effect in the office of the recorder in the county in which such congregation, church, or society is located. Such affidavit or a copy thereof duly certified by the recorder shall be received as evidence of the due incorporation of such congregation, church, or society. The term of the office of the trustees are sheiks in our case. Of any such corporation may be determined by the rules or bylaws. So let's rewind again. The term of office of the trustees are sheiks in our case of any corporation may be determined by the rules or bylaws of the society. The society's laws are the law. Section 38, a failure to elect trustees or sheiks or officers at any time shall not work a dissolution of such corporation, but the, but the trustees last elected shall be considered as an office until their successors are elected. So I'm not gonna read that. I wanted to read enough of it so you can see the parallel of uh, what Noble Joe Ali did and how he took an advantageous political uh, advantage and using some laws that are, um, that's basically res judicata because like I say, it's a public act of Illinois. So that's, that's a public act of the state. So he, he um, used that wording and just, he already knew organized government. He's like, oh, okay, that's, all, that's a chic position. You're gonna do the same thing. And then our bylaws, right? His um, divine bylaws, for the Moorish movement, right? With all the acts in there, you know, that's the jurisdiction. That's why it's important. That's why it's important to uh, no organization and, and things like that and no law all, on all sorts of levels because we can just take this, boom, this is president. So any organization that's created, we just follow the same footsteps. 
Um, so that's what I wanted to share on that. Um, so let me show you an example of the bylaws that I'm talking about. So Act 1, Act 2, when you see how it says bylaws, Act 3, Act 4, Act 5. Now let's go through a couple of them and um, we can close out. So the divine constitution of Moorish America. So this will be an example of what I read earlier as far as the in-house bylaws are the law, right? Everything I'm saying pretty much makes sense, Tracking. All right. So act one, the grand sheik and the chairman of Moorish America are empowered to make law and enforce laws with the assistance of the prophet and the grand body of Moorish America. You notice it didn't say Moorish Science Temple, it said Moorish America, which is people that know that who they are and organize amongst themselves under the fold of what he's laying down right here. The assistant grand sheik is to assist the grand sheik in all affairs if he lives according to love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice. And it is known before the citizens of Moorish America. The bylaws, act two. All meetings are to be opened and closed promptly according to the circle seven and love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice. Friday is our holy day of rest because on Friday, the first man was formed in flesh. And on a Friday, the first man departed out of flesh and ascended into his father, God Allah. For that cause, Friday is the holy day for all Muslims all over the world. Act three, love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice must be proclaimed by all citizens of Moorish America. No citizen is to put in danger or accuse falsely his brother or sister on any occasion at all that may harm his brother or sister because Allah is love. Act four, all citizens must preserve these holy and divine laws and all citizens must obey the laws of the government because by being a Moorish American, you are part and parcel of the government and must live the life accordingly. So that once again, the government we are talking about, right, is back to the bylaws, the organization, that's government. The people came together, things were elected, you know what I'm saying? So we gotta live by that. And the character, right? Because we were saying um, the Moorish part, you know, we know for being noble. So, you know, your character must line up with nobility. Act five, no organization of Moorish America, no more, look, no organization of Moorish America, any organization of Moors, right? No more, no organization of Moorish America is to cause any confusion or to overthrow the laws and constitution of the said government, but to obey hereby. Act six, with us, all citizens must proclaim their nationality and we are, and we are teaching our people their nationality and their divine creed that they may know that they are part and parcel to this said government and know that they are not Negroes, colored folks, black people, or Ethiopians, because these names were given to slaves by slave masters in 1779 and lasted into 1865 during the time of slavery. But this is a new era of time and all men must proclaim their free national name to be recognized by the said government in which they live and the nations of the earth. This is the reason why Allah, the great God of the universe, ordained Noble Jew Ali, the prophet, to redeem his people from their sinful ways. The Moorish Americans are the descendants of the ancient Moabites, whom inhabited the northwestern and southwestern shores of Africa. You notice this is Act 6. This is part of the bylaws. This is setting a precedent, right? We got culture inside the bylaws. Act 7. All citizens must properly attend their meetings and become a part and partial of uplifting acts of Moorish American. Moorish Americans must pay their dues and keep in line with all necessities of Moorish America. And then you are entitled to the name of faithful. 
Husband, you must support your wife and children. Wife, you must obey your husband and take care of your children and take after the duties of your household. Sons and daughters must obey father and mother and be industrious and become part of the uplifting of fallen humanity. All Moorish Americans must keep their hearts and minds pure with love and their bodies clean with water. This divine covenant is from your holy prophet, Noble Jew Ali, through the guidance of his father, God Allah. So that was Act 7. So these were all the acts that, as you can see, when we read previously with the laws of Illinois, which back to Article 4, Section 1, is stating that full faith and credit on the uh, Illinois law that said any in-house organization, if it's structured with organization, it is the law, especially if it's for charitable purposes, religious purposes, and um, what are some of the bullet points in Illinois that the ramifications of charitable purposes, right? Pushing your political agenda, that's a charitable purpose. Teaching your people about health, uplifting them, promote unity, or anything that's deemed, like I say, necessary for the community, right? So that was a, that was something that he advantageously um, used the bylaws to be in harmony, right? And even in their system, they had to, uh, it's, it's twofold, right? And it's national in character, it's a national movement. So Moorish American prayer, Allah, the father of the universe, the father of love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice. Allah is my protector, my guide, my salvation, by night and by day, through his holy prophet, Obadu Ali. Amen. So I'm going to close out right here. Um, any questions? Islam. Islam. Any, any questions from anybody?